Welcome back to The Daily Grind, everyone. Today I'm doing a video on what you need to get started with chickens. Now, I am no expert. This is the first time I've had chickens, but I recently went through what all it took to be able to get everything, and it's all fresh in my memory, and I figured I would bring you guys along and let you guys know if you're interested in getting chickens yourself. So you can go a couple routes here. You can get eggs online and hatch them out yourself, and then grow the chickens from that. But most people aren't gonna do that. You need specialized incubator. You need a few things, and I didn't do that. What I did, and what most people do, is go to a local feed shop. I went to Tractor Supply and get baby chicks already hatched. Generally, they're one to four days old, sometimes up to a week old. Now, they sell specialized brooders. You can get metal containers. You can even just do it in a cardboard box, honestly. But the thing is, you're gonna need lights that provide heat, and that can be dangerous with cardboard because it can set it on fire. So I highly recommend not doing the cardboard. I've read horror stories online of that happening where it sets on fire, and most of us are gonna keep it in our house. You don't want a fire to break out in your house. So those specialized brooders are very expensive, and honestly, I don't think you necessarily need it. We just got some of those plastic totes from like Home Depot, they're like $20, if that. We got some from Costco actually for 10 bucks each roughly. And so that worked out perfectly. And then we got a light. The light is to provide some heat for them. They need warmth and you gotta keep them at 95 degrees constantly for the first week. And then it goes down by five degrees each week until they're fine with room temperature in your house. Now you could get those lights, they're the cheapest option. They also make brooder heat pads as well. And those can work also. They're a little more expensive, but a great option. And the size of the box will matter depending on how many you get. Now we got 11 birds, a couple guinea fowl and the rest chickens. And they quickly outgrew the small tote. So we had to go buy a second large tote. So keep that in mind. I don't know the exact ratio off the top of my head, but there is a certain ratio of, of bird size to square footage of your container, of your brooder. So I'll put that in the description section below. That, you also need a feeder, you need chick feed, and all that can get pretty pricey. So we spent about $100 on everything when we first got the chickens. That does not include the plastic bin. That's just what we bought. So that includes chick food, some electrolytes for their water, watering dispensers and the food dispensers. Also, of course, food and then the chickens. So it does get a little pricey when you start off and then you're never gonna use that again unless you hatch more chicks. So again, I highly recommend when you're first starting off not to go buy all this expensive equipment. Go as cheap as you can. If you have some of those plastic boat totes laying around, use those, they work great. You also need hay for the bottom or pine shavings. Pine shavings is what most people use. We ended up going with hay because my wife ended up somehow being allergic to the pine. I don't know what it was, it was causing allergies for her, so we ended up going with hay. And we've stuck with hay since. As you can see, we've got hay laying all over the place in the, in the chicken run. And I will put the total prices of everything below in the description section for this moment in time. Things change, prices change, so a year from now, all those prices might be different. But I will also link to all these products that I had used in the description section below. I'll probably link to Amazon. Some of them I did get at Amazon, some, some of them I did not. And then next, once they grow up to a certain age, then you can put them outside. And you're gonna wanna do that as soon as you possibly can. And how soon you can get them outside depends on your weather. If the temperatures reach too hot or they reach too cold outside, you're gonna have to keep them in for a certain period of time. By the sixth week, they're generally able to handle the temperature fluctuations of being outside. But all this depends on the type of feathers that your birds have. So when they're young, they have that down and that doesn't keep them super warm. Once they get older, they get the, the true feathers. And once you see that, some of the true feathers coming out and they're fully feathered out, less of that peach fuzz kind of, you know, funky looking feathering. Uh, once they're fully feathered out, then they can go outside. Now, once they get outside, then you're gonna be spending money on things like a coop and a chicken run. You're also gonna wanna get different chicken feeders and watering dispensers. And I'm gonna go through all what I have for my adult chickens here. That can get kind of pricey depending on how many chickens you have and the size of your chickens and the quality of the runs or the coops that you guys decide that you wanna get. So of course, the two major things that you're gonna be needing to get for when you put the chickens outside is gonna be a coop 
and a run. Now some of the coupes that you can get have a run attached, but they're generally very small. I don't find that to be the best option. I don't think it keeps your chickens all that healthy, but if you only got two of them, maybe that's plenty. The other thing to keep in mind is if you go to any of the big box stores, like Tractor Supply, really most anywhere, you buy them on Amazon, whatever it may be, these coupes tend to be very small. For something this size, you'd spend well over $1,000, which I think is just absolutely way too much money to spend on chickens. I mean, you can do it. There are some really nice ones that you can get that are $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, and they're really nice, and they can hold up to, you know, 15 chickens. However, that's too expensive for me, and I would guess that's too expensive for all of you. For this one, this holds up to about 12 chickens. I've got eight in there. It possibly could hold a little bit more if they were all bantam size, which are smaller breed chickens. And I got this for $250. I found a local guy that puts them together, sells them. And I thought that was a great deal, so I did it. I was actually gonna build one myself. That's another option for you, which I could have done, but it might've cost as much. Now, what this guy does, which you could probably do if you wanna build your own, is he gets pallets, and then he breaks down the pallets and you use the pallet wood for it so it ends up being free wood for him he does have to buy some like these four by fours for the feet and then of course all the all the hardware but you can go on the the cheap of course the screws as well he has to buy in the roofing material and all that but you can go on the inexpensive and save some money on materials and build your own and you can definitely do that i'll show you guys the inside of here so this way you can see what you're looking for Sorry, it's not super clean. Uh, I do clean it out often, but chickens poop. But this is not that, that bad, honestly. So what you're looking for is a one that can open up like this so you can easily sweep all this out because you're gonna have to clean out the, the bedding pretty often, unless you do a deep litter method and then you want something with the ledge here to keep that in, which I don't have, so I'm cleaning it out. I'm doing it about once a month, it's a little, I need to do it more often. And the other thing is you need roosts, so you need things that they can sit high up. The higher the roost, the more they want to sit there, and they all seem to line up right on this one, and they all fit. And if I had more birds, I'd get some to line up here. Um, most of them aren't ever going to be on these because they want to be as high up as they can. The only ones that would would be like the ones that are really low on the pecking order, if that makes sense. The other thing you're going to want to add if you make your own is some nest boxes. You want these separate because they'll come in here and lay. And then that way you can just open up something. You want it where you can just open it up and be able to gather the eggs without disturbing any of the chickens inside or having to open up the whole thing. And I'm gonna link to a couple online that you can get. They're not the best quality, but they are inexpensive and they can get you started. I have a feeling you'll have to replace them shortly after, but at least they can get you started. Um, if you wanna build your own, there's some plans online that you can get for it and that could help you but that's just something that you have to kind of figure out what you want to do the next thing you're going to want to get is a run unless you buy one that already has one uh, uh, connected now even if you do you can buy a separate run for it later on and i highly recommend that even if you have one that's connected and then cut out a section of that so they have more room because a lot of those runs are not big enough. So this is a 20 foot by 10 foot roughly. And this was about $250 roughly online. So in total, I spent $500. It's a lot of money, but we'll always have it. So it's good to have. Um, and it came with this mesh which could be fine for you. And it totally is um, if you have like a backyard, like a fence backyard and you don't really have any wild animals coming in. Um, it came with one tarp that was really cheap, so we ended up upgrading to better tarps, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But it comes with all everything you need for the run, and it keeps them safe and keeps them in there. It basically keeps them from getting out. It doesn't keep stuff from kind of getting in. If a dog really wanted to get in here, they could easily get this. I mean, it's 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 strong, but it's it, it can easily break. This is just to keep them in and not predators out, and that's why we ended up lining the whole thing with this, this is more of a thick hardware cloth, and that would be really difficult for most wild animals or neighborhood dogs, cats, and whatnot to be able to get in here. And we had just lined the bottom. I didn't need to fix the whole part. We did put the put it on the door, and that ended up costing about another $75 for all that to line the entire outward part. Then we ended up upgrading the tarps, and we got two, and we found these. They're really good. They're canvas tarps, and 
I mean, even in this Texas heat, I mean, you can see a little bit wearing right there because I've got this poking, I need to fix that. But in the Texas heat, they're still, they're strong and there's no sign of rippage on them. They're doing great. And we got two of them and it basically covers the whole thing. And this is the theory is, we do have hawks that come from up above. And I don't want them to see the chickens and they'll be able to get through, those hawks can get through this pretty good. And I didn't want to cover the whole top with this hardware cloth and the whole thing. So we just put the tarps up and it not only gives them shade in the summer, it gets hot here in Texas, um, but it also keeps the rain off them so they can still be out here. A lot of times when it's raining, I mean, they sometimes don't care, but don't quote me on it. I will put in the description section exactly what we spent, but I believe they were $40 each. So that's another $80. So all in all, we spent just on the run and the coop about $600, $650 roughly. I'll of course add this all up down below so you can see what we spent. Now a couple other things you're gonna wanna get are some feeders and waterers. So the ones that you use for the chicks are just not big enough. You'd have to <laughs> replace the water three or four times a day because their water needs are much higher when they get bigger. But I highly recommend these types. So you just get a five gallon bucket. They're not that expensive. You can get them at Walmart for like 450 for a five gallon bucket. Uh, now they look real dirty and they are. <laughs> I just cleaned them out this morning and they've already kicked dirt into it. So you can, once or twice a day, you come in and hose them out and it cleans them out. They're basically little cups that drill into the side. And if you lift them up, they fill with water. Now you don't have to because they naturally will lift up once they drink enough water and the weight of the water isn't pulling it down. When it's pulled down, it stops the water from fil uh, trickling in so it doesn't completely empty. And so this just gives them water when they need it. And then you just fill this up and I generally find that I fill this up about once every two or three days. The other thing you'll want is a feeder. So there's a couple different options out there, but this works really well. And I'll show you kind of how this does work. You can see that they can stick their head in there and there's feed right in there. <laughs> They're so interested in the camera. What is it? So <laughs> they think I'm gonna feed them or something or this is food. So I find this really good because I can just fill up this bucket. So I'm actually doing an experiment right now where that video will come out soon. But I filled this up and I showed the date on the camera from my phone of when I filled it up. I'm gonna wait to see when the next time I need to fill it up and then we can see how long it takes for them to eat all of the five gallon bucket feed. But this just basically keeps keeps this all contained and actually I can see the feed has been eaten down to here. So that's it's been about a week and a half to two weeks. So they've eaten half of it. But yeah, it just allows them to get what they need. Most of it doesn't spill out, some does, but they'll eat that off the ground. And so you can get that. And so these cost about $20 for these little things and the, about the same price for these if you get them on Amazon and that's where I got them. You can also get them at Tractor Supply or any of the big box shops um, that sell chicken stuff. And then the five gallon buckets each. So $40, $50 for the water and the feeder. And of course you need to buy food. The other thing I highly recommend, now I don't have this filled with dirt right now, but I highly recommend it is to get a kiddie pool. I got this one for $7 at Walmart. It's the cheapest one they made and that's totally fine for this and what we're going to use it for. So I throw this in and I found in the summer it it got so hot here they needed to cool down. And so I would fill this with dirt. I tried water only at first and they just were scared of it. They didn't want to get in. They didn't like the water, but I filled it with dirt and Chickens love dirt. They'll just, they love dust baths and everything. And then I would hose down the dirt and make it moist and then it would be cool. So they'd come in, lay in it and cool down in the summer. Um, in the winter, they like to bury in the dirt and keep, and it helps keep them warm. And so usually I'll have this filled up a lot of times with potting soil that I had gathered from a pot that has a spent plant. And I'll just throw it in here and they just kick it up and also really beneficial if you do garden as well. They'll be pooping all in here and basically rejuvenate the soil and add compost for you. I highly recommend it for $7, totally worth it. So the other thing you'll also probably need is some antibiotics. There are some chicken diseases that you might need to give them, so it's good to have on hand. You can get most of these for like 20 bucks each, depending on the antibiotic. There's a couple different remedies that you can get. They'll let you know wherever you get that kind of stuff what you should get and what you shouldn't. Another thing that's beneficial is roosts. And by the way, a couple weeks ago, I made a video on installing this 
and I finally have been seeing them up in here uh, roosting. Um, they're not always doing it, but but they do. This one they like better. So I installed this. Just I found some wood. I mean, you can build your own if you want to get some two by fours and build your own, or you can just grab some sticks out here. We I mean I cut down. You can see I've got a lot of trees out here. I cut down a whole bunch of trees, so I had some some wood that was perfect for it and it just gives them somewhere to get up off the ground that they feel a little safer um, you want to add that in your run if you got enough space for it so that's it for now i will link in the description section all the products i can find on amazon or big box shops or wherever you can get online otherwise go to your local box uh, big box shop they can definitely help you or if you've got like a local feed shop a lot of times they'll have that stuff too and highly recommend local feed shops they generally have more knowledge to be able to give you and provide if you have questions of course you're gonna need to buy food you'll need some kind of bedding but that's pretty much it so like i said i'll link anything i forgot will be in the description section. Let me know in the comment section if I missed anything and help out anyone watching that might be new to this. If you have more experience and you have some other pointers or tips to share, or if you have any questions, I'll do my best to try to answer those for you. Well, thanks for coming along everyone. So there is my take on what you need to be able to start owning chickens. It's not really that hard and really in reality it's not super expensive but there is some cost involved and there is a little bit of a learning curve. I mean, we did lose one chicken which was sad and the kids were bummed about it but generally we have kept our chickens healthy and happy. A couple little diseases came through but we were able to take care of it. Thanks for watching everyone. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe and also hit that bell notification for future video updates. Also, if you could hit that like button, it really helps out the channel and lets YouTube algorithm know that you guys do like this content and it'll give them the incentive to show it to more people. Also check out some of my other content. I do videos on gardening and on my chickens. We basically run a kind of mini urban homestead here. We do buy other food, but we like to grow and produce as much of the food that we eat ourselves. And it's fun, I bring my kids along on the channel. They're fun to watch. Um, they really enjoy this kind of stuff. So definitely subscribe, check out my other content. And I will also, at the end of this video, put a couple that are some of my favorites. I will see you on the next video. Now you guys try to escape the daily grind.